Hi everyone! Today we're going to be looking at Fruchtwörde, or conjunctions. There are three Gruppe, or three groups, of conjunctions, and each one affects the sentences in a very particular way. We'll look at all of these personalities as we go through each group. Here's Group 1. I like to remember it by thinking of the word mowed and imagining this little child mowing the grass. The reason why I associate it with a child is because Group Yen is by far the easiest. When you combine two sentences using a Group Yen conjunction, the word order stays just the same for both of the sentences, and you just put the conjunction in the middle. I like to think it of think of it as child's play. So, what words are in Group One, and what does mode stand for? Well. Mode stands for maar, of, want, en, doch. You can remember that the D is doch specifically because children like to play with dogs. There are a lot of D words in the different Gruppe, so that's why I point this out in particular. You'll also notice that doch, want, and maar have, com have commas before them. That's because when we join sentences using these conjunctions, we need to remember to put in these commas before those particular words. Of and N don't get any punctuation. Of, of, noch, noch, and suvel as are also in Group Yen, but I'll deal with those in another video. Let's look and look at an example so we can better understand Group Yen. All we want to do here is look at the two sentences. Now the way you might be asked the question is you would be given the two sentences and then the word to join them with in brackets. Okay? So spiel no, say hij daar huiswerk gedoen. Verbund met want. Okay? So spiel no, comma, see, first sentence completely unchanged, then the comma followed by the conjunction which breaks the two sentences so we know where they split and then the rest and then the second sentence completely unchanged so it our huiswerk gedoen it's super easy child's play you don't really need to remember you know you don't really need to remember to do anything special just remember that want is in the first group and it's part of the word mode that brings us to group 2 all right and I like to remember Group Tua as thinking of them as the words that are used by doctors and scientists and lawyers. Really clever people who use long words like nevertheless, besides, therefore, as a result, otherwise, therefore, although. Super long words, right? You can also remember Group Tua as all of the D words, right? Like a clever doctor, de, except doch, because children like to play with dogs, and dat, which ends with an at, so it goes in group three, but more about that later, okay? So how do these words affect the sentences when you join with them? Well, one of the things you'll notice is that they have semicolons and commas in front of them, in front of some of the words, not all of them, okay? The same as Group Yen, the words that have commas or semicolons in front of them, you need to remember to include that punctuation when you use these to join sentences, okay? And then um, the way that this affects the verbs, because the verb in the second sentence is so important, right? Global warming scientists and human rights lawyers love to take action. They're always suing people and bringing this class action and telling people to do this and not to do that and all of these kinds of things. So, they keep action words really close by. What does this mean for you? The sentence one will stay the same, but in sentence two, the first verb will go next to the fourth word to keep the action really close by. Shall we look at an example to see how? Here we go. Sy het haar huiswerk gedoen, sy speel nou. 
verbind met der halwe. Ok, first sentence stays exactly the same. So he het daar huiswerk gedoen. There you go, you can see it's exactly the same. Then we put down the conjunction, der halwe. It doesn't have any punctuation attached to it, so we can just put it down immediately. Then, we like to put the first verb close to the conjunction, because he likes to take action. So, spiel comes out of the first sentence. And then, the rest of the first sentence in order goes down. Say no. Say het haar huiswerk gedoen, der halwer spiel say no. Okay. Let's look at group 3. Group 3 has all of the words that end in at and all of the words that have IE in them except Beitendien, which is a Krupp Tweer word. Krupp 3 also contains all of the question words like warum, who, war, who feel, wanneer, what, and so on and so forth. Okay? Um, but if you learn the Krupp 1 and Krupp 2 Fufwada, then you won't have to remember which conjunctions are in group 3. I like to think of group 3 as hipsters. They like to keep things really calm. They don't like too much action, because, you know, action is so mainstream. Also, action might spill their coffee. And hipsters love coffee. Um, but you want to keep action words as far away from the hipsters so they don't sp spill their coffee. So how do we do that? We take the first verb from the second sentence and put it to the end of the sentence, right? If it's a helping verb, it's not that much action. So it can go a little bit closer to the hipster. In other words, it can go just in front of the second verb. If it is not a helping verb, then it must go all the way to the end, straight after verb 2. We don't want to know about this action. It must be far away from the coffee. Helping verbs are not so much action, so they can be that little bit closer. Shall we look at an example? Alrighty. Say kan spiel. Say het haar huiswerk gedoen. Nadat. Verbind met nadat. Say kan spiel. First sentence stays the same, you can put that down immediately. Then, nadat. You'll notice that none of the group three words have, have any punctuation attached to them. So we don't have to put any punctuation down. So we put our conjunction down. Then, we put down the second sentence without its verb. Now remember that we're looking at het, which is technically not a helping verb. So it needs to go all the way to the end. So we'll put down say har heiswerk gedoen without het. Say har heiswerk gedoen. And then we can put het down. Het. So I can't spiel nadat say har heiswerk gedoen het. Alright. What about the things that apply to more than one group? Okay. So let's look if at if one of the sentences in the unkenede of negative form. In other words, one of the sentences, or both, is negative. Where the first sentence is negative, nothing changes. Um, which will depend in these examples in the order, but we'll look at those in a minute. Okay? If the second sentence is in the negative, that creates a little bit of a different story. All right? Now what we want to do is leave the first knee exactly where it is. Even though the first verb is going to move, that knee needs to stay in that place. So it'll normally end up next to the subject. And then the second knee, is you're going to want to keep at the end of the sentence. Right at the end of the sentence. Even if you have to put a verb in front of it, make sure the knee is the last word in the sentence. So, how does this work? We have here, hy kan nie kos kwerk nie. Hy het nie sy stoof skoon gemaak nie. Darum. Okay, so darum was therefore, so we're going to want to put say het nie, say stoof, skoon gemaak nie, because hey kan nie, kos kook nie, is a result of hey het nie, say stoof, skoon gemaak nie. So, hey het nie, say stoof, skoon gemaak nie, like I said, nothing changes in the first sentence. Right, 
You can put dot arm down, it doesn't have any punctuation attached to it, so we don't put that down. And then it's a group two, so we put the action word as close to the conjunction as possible so you can take action. Then the rest of the sentence leaving me next to I because this verb has moved, which leaves me directly next to the subject. And we're going to want to keep this knee at the end of the sentence. So, darum kann he nie kuskwerk nie. Nie stays at the end. For group three, like aangezien, he kan nie kuskwerk nie, he het nie, se stof skoon gemaakt nie, aangezien, as a result. Okay? Um, or, sorry, seeing that. As a result of seeing that. So it's going to be Haikani Kos Kwokni because it is a result of the fact that he hasn't cleaned his stove. Haikani Kos Kwokni, first sentence stays the same. On Chasin, no punctuation attached. Remember, we're going to move Het all the way to the end of the sentence, so Ni is going to be next to Hai. Hai Ni says to have Skun Het Ni. Het is not a helping verb, so it goes after Skun Chamak. And ni must stay all the way at the end of the sentence. I can't eat course quirk ni on chrisin. I ni say stu of skun chamak et ni. Alright, the second thing that applies to more than one group. Can you start a sentence the fuch word? Yes. For group two, you can only use the fuch word al. And you can use any group three fuch word. Let's look at starting with group two fuch word first. Alright, so we've said that you can start with al. Alright, I'm going to use the example, say, say do not ice back, say will spill. Begin mit al. Okay, and we'll look at the answer to that as we go along. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is realize that al means although, and that's going to affect some kind of causality and order. So, which sentence goes first is going to need to depend on that. So the way I like to think of it is generally, although I'd rather be doing something else, I'm doing that thing that I don't want to do. So we're going to start with save all spiel. Okay? Because although she wants to be playing, she's doing her homework. Although she doesn't want to be doing her homework, she is doing it. So that's the order that makes sense to me. So we start the sentence with al, and then we put down the first action word from the sentence we've decided will go first. Although, all right, al, bol, say spiel, okay, then we can put down a comma. Al bol, say spiel. And then, the first verb from the second sentence, doen, say har heiswerk. Of will say spiel, doen, say har heiswerk. Remember, put this verb down, then the rest of the sentence. You'll notice that for group 2 and 3, the comma will always go in the middle to indicate the separation between the two original sentences. And you'll notice that we always start the second sentence with a verb, and that's just because of the way that the sentences are affected by beginning with a conjunction. If we look at starting with a group three fourth word, I've chosen an chasin for the example we'll go through. You want to choose which sentence makes the most sense in the context of the fourth word. Um, for here, I have decided that say hetar heisvar khudun should go first um, because the ability to go and play or being allowed to go play results uh, from the fact that she's done her homework so because she's done her homework or seeing that she's done her homework she can go play so um, you want to start the sentence with the fourth word um, then because this is a hipster, we're going to want to keep the action as far away as possible. So, on chrisin, say har heiswerk gedun het. Remember, it will go after gedun. And then we're going to put down a comma. 
start with the verb from the second sentence, can, and then say, spill the rest of the second sentence. Make sure that the hipster doesn't spill his coffee in the first sentence. Keep that verb as far away as possible. So what you end up with is aangezien sy haar huiswerk gedoen het, all the actions far away from the full quote, comma, kan sy spiel. Simple as that. So what are the commonalities between group 2 and group 3 when you begin sentences? Right, some of the commonalities you will notice is that both answers that start with a group 2 or a group 3 forward have a comma between the two sentences that were joined. Remember though, when I say a group 2 forward you begin with, I mean only L. Alright? The first verb of the second sentence will always go immediately after the comma. And the first sentence behaves based on whether the forward likes or doesn't like action. So, this is where they get different is the group 2 al forward likes to stay close to the action so the verb will go immediate the first verb will go immediately after the forward for group 3 the verb goes far away so that the hipster doesn't spill his copy right i think that just about sums up forward eh? um i'll do a little thing on off off serval us and uh, noch noch another day but that should sort you out for most tests and exams in terms of Fuchwara. So if you've liked my video, please go ahead and actually like it on YouTube. Or share it with a friend of yours who you think maybe needs some help. Or share it with your class if you think they could benefit from it and do that little bit better in their tests and exams. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe. I do try and upload videos when I can. I'll be a little bit more consistent this year now that I've got my schedule down. My channel is Look At Me Learn. Let me know if you've got any questions or any particularly hard examples that you're dealing with that you'd like some help with. Have a lovely day!